Good afternoon, my friends. I hope all of you are having an awesome, fantastic day. And hello from Epcot. So it's officially the week of Thanksgiving, which is one of the most busiest weeks here at Walt Disney World. And I was very lucky to find a reservation to come here today because as of yesterday, there was no theme park availability for pass holders. So I'm very lucky to be here. I don't really have a solid plan for this video besides going into Epcot, checking out the insane crowds, the wait times, hopefully have some park updates, and maybe find a new treat or two, maybe some new merchandise. I'm just very happy to be here because I did not think I was going to be at a Disney park this week. Also, we have some breaking news to talk about just from a few hours ago. Disney announced that they are once again pausing the sales of APs. Now, we don't know the full reason why or how long they're going to be paused. What another bomb from Disney, right? Now, keep this in mind. If you need to renew coming up, Disney has said you can still renew, so don't worry about that. And they're also still selling the lowest tier of a pass that you can buy, but that one's only for Florida residents residents only and you're pretty much blocked out the whole year besides maybe a few weeks or a few months I don't know why you would buy that pass but that kind of stinks doesn't it now like I said I don't really know the full story as to why Disney is doing this once again but in my own personal opinion I think they're doing this just because so many people bought APs now just by Disney's history and things they have said in the past they don't really make a lot of money off pass holders which I kind of agree and disagree with at the same time but as a business they would much rather you pay per day and not for a AP for the entire year and just remember what's going on over on the west coast at Disneyland with pass holders and day tickets and reservations so this whole thing is just a giant mess in my personal opinion. Anyway, let's head inside Epcot and have another fun day, shall we? I hope you guys are ready because I am. Let's go do this. As I'm heading in, I had a park over here, which I haven't parked over here in a very long time. That's just another reason to show you guys how busy it is. But look at this, the trams which are still not operating. We haven't had any kind of announcement that they are returning, but they're still here, just parked in the corner. Okay, I have made it in and check out Spaceship Earth. She's such a beauty, ain't she? The current wait time to ride Spaceship Earth is a 25 minute wait. The line looks long, but it's moving. That's a good sign so far. I think the best announcement that we got over this last weekend from the D23 event is we finally know when Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is opening. Now, we don't have an official date, but we know it's opening summer of 2022, which isn't that far away at all. This ride looks insane. There's a lot of construction happening at the former home of the temporary mouse gear. I believe this is going to be a new quick service restaurant and here's a different angle of the construction. I'm now passing by test track, oh monorail shot and look at the standby line. It's a 95 minute wait right now. Well frozen ever after is a 110 minute wait. No more individual lightning lane options. Grand Fiesta Tour 30, Big Mint 15, Living with the Land 25, Mission Space 35, Remy, there is nothing offered right now. I really wanted to ride that today. Nemo 30, Soren 40, no more Lightning Lane, Spaceship Earth 35, there's a 530 Lightning Lane, Test Track 95, no Lightning Lane at all. Wow, yeah, it's pretty busy. I'm just pretty curious about getting a walk up to Space 220, maybe a walk up to the bar or something. Let's find out. I'm not very hopeful, but I'm curious. Well, I asked and the answer wasn't just no. So I am in the standby line right now. It is offered. I ask, there's nothing right now, but if I stay in line for like 30 minutes, she said possibly I could go eat at the bar or something. So I'm going to wait around and see what happens, but uh, Fingers crossed. I maybe waited 15 minutes and they called my name and I'm going in. They have a seat at the bar. What? Like my week is made right now. I'm in. Hello, I'm the one. I have my space elevator boarding pass and I'm just waiting to be loaded and off to space I go to space 220. Race to space. The latest in space elevator design and technology. Today, you'll have a spectacular view of Florida Right down there, you'll see a cloud conveniently covering all the 
action happening at Epcot. It's almost like Mother Nature doesn't want you to see it just as much as you guys do. So, do any of you guys know what an astronaut's favorite cocktail is? A Cosmo. Welcome you on board the Centauri Space Station. You guys can follow me through the open airlock door. I said you guys can follow me through the open airlock door. <laughs> and down this hallway to the host who will take you to your Thank table. Thank you so much. Enjoy, friends. Look at this. I had no idea I would get this opportunity to enjoy and experience Space 220 once again. Only waited 15 minutes. These reservations are like so hard to get nowadays. All right, here is my seat at the bar for lunch. I like that there's a mirror right here. That way we can still see Earth. And then as I turn around, look at this view. I love this place so much. Here is the QR code if you guys want to scan this QR code with your phone to pull up the menu. To start with, I went ahead and ordered a Red Star, which is Jameson, Dragon Fruit, and Fresh Lemon for $17, which is basically like a whiskey sour, and then I got a water. Look at the little star out of lemon right there on top. Pretty neat. Something that I wanted to point out here at the bar, they have these cushions here to rest your arms on while you eat and drink. Also, look at this cool LED light underneath the bar. Right from the lounge menu, I ordered chicken on waffle for $18. This looks amazing and it smells so delicious. I just finished chicken on a waffle. It was a fantastic lounge dish. The chicken was cooked nice and well and juicy and tender. The waffle was cooked really well and they had like a coleslaw on it as well and then a maple glazed drizzle. It was just a very nice dish. I really like that. I recommend that dish. I went ahead and ordered another drink just because I'm going to need it just because this park is very busy today. And then I ordered a dessert. I'm so sorry. That is the Admus spreads, uh, orange twist on an Aperol spreads with a little bit of vodka, Aperol, good orange puree, uh, Prosecco on top, really balanced drink as well. Oh my goodness, look at this dessert. I got the sticky toffee pudding cake for $14. This is a dark chocolate sauce, caramel crunchy pearls, and salted toffee drizzle. This looks so good. I asked the bartender here and he said this is a must get every single time. It's the best dessert here, so let's give it a try. The caramel scent is so strong, like I'm ready to eat this thing. I'm just kind of taking it in because it is a beautiful looking dessert. This was probably the best dessert I've ever had on property here at Walt Disney World. I mean, I loved every single bite. The only thing that's left is bananas because I don't really care for bananas, so don't judge me. but. Yeah, 10 out of 10, I highly recommend. This for sure was the best dessert I've ever got from Walt Disney World. Absolutely, hands down. Here's a better look at the bar. I was seated right here. Fantastic bartender, thank you so much, man. Happy holidays. Yeah, this is very nice, and this is just the lounge area here. And then of course you have your main dining here. There's Earth once again. I can't tell you guys how many things I've seen from sitting at the bar. Oh. There's two astronauts right there. You guys see them? They're signing to each other. This is awesome. Let me get a little bit closer. But yeah, this is the bar. I highly recommend if you guys can walk up to the bar, this is great. I actually really enjoyed this a little bit more than when I was here for the preview and I was eating the prefix menu. I don't know, I just like the lounge menu a little bit better. And of course the drinks were great as well. Look at this, the United States right there. We can see the panhandle of Florida. And then here's a look at the main table here by the window. Just very cool, such a immersive experience. Oh, there's like a satellite coming. This is so nuts. So unique. This is my second time eating here at Space 220 and I feel exactly the same as I felt the first time. I don't want to leave. I want to stay. 
all day here. Oh man, Disney, you guys did a fantastic job with Space 220. All right, let's head back down to Earth. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, please. Tell her I said thank you. You know, I might have to grab a picture. She won't believe me. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> now we are going at 13,000 miles an hour, which makes this trip a lot faster than Tower of Terror. Goodbye, Space 220. On behalf of everybody here at the Centauri Space Station, our captain has a couple words for you. So if you guys will listen up to our captain. I hope you enjoyed your visit to Space 220. I look forward to seeing now, you again soon. Now, if you guys watch, I'm going to use the force. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just left Space 220. I did not want to leave at all. I really enjoyed my experience eating at the lounge just because I liked the vibe. Like the bartender was awesome. I was talking with a few individuals that were sitting at the bar with me, just kind of having a Disney conversation. It was just, it was really nice. I really enjoyed this. I waited 15 minutes. It was a fun time. I really enjoyed everything I had. I, I can't recommend a restaurant more enough than Space 220. Also. Steakhouse 71, those are the two best restaurants here at Walt Disney World currently. Also, I decided not to go with the prefix menu, which for lunch it was $55. I just wanted to kind of try other things and I really liked that lounge menu. And the total for drinks and the food that I got with the dessert, just about $50 and then of course your tip. But next up, I'm going to head to the World Showcase. Just have a loop around, see what we can see check out the crowds and the wait times and uh, just keep having fun because it's already off to a really good start. Oh yes, before I forget, they do offer AP discounts and DVC discounts. I don't think they offered that when Space 220 first opened, but now they do, 10% off. Here's the Epcot Christmas tree. And I really like this Christmas tree because it showcases the different countries throughout the World Showcase. I noticed this stage and it's for the Festival of the Holidays, which begins this Friday, November 26th, and it goes through December 30th. This is a joyful celebration of the season right here on the stage. Can't wait. I love Festival of the Holidays here at Epcot. They already have the holiday signage up and ready for this Friday. I'm heading back to Remy's Ratatouille Adventure and they're currently boarding group 71 through 79. It's going on 5 p.m. I feel like they're a little behind today. I like these simple Christmas decorations here right outside of Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. It's a little busy back in this area, but this is what it looks like pretty much every day just because this area isn't that big. But look at the line to get crepes here at La Creperie de Paris. It's not too bad. I do really like this place. I stopped here in Germany to get a gingerbread salted caramel buttercream cookie sandwich. And these are only available during the holiday season. I can already taste the hot wine. Only a few more days left. Frozen Ever After is still a 115 minute standby wait. I stopped inside the creation shop and man, they are still trying to push all of this Halloween merchandise out. There's no discount. There's the Hanukkah merch. And then across the way here, we have Christmas. Oh, this is new. Sweater weather with Slinky. I like that. Very fun. I think I've already showed you guys all of the Christmas merch. I don't really see anything new there's still a lot of construction happening here and i believe right here will be the moana area 
and we have some things starting to go vertical. I'm going to head inside the land to have a ride on living with the land to see the Christmas overlay. The last time I checked, it was only a 25 minute wait. Okay, I made it. And right now standby is only five minutes. I'll take it. The American prairie once appeared as desolate as the desert. But over time, rainwater and nutrients gradually penetrated the hard surface of this land. Of all the forces at work on the land, humans have had one of the most profound effects. The need to produce food for a growing world led to the enormous use and sometimes overuse of the land. How will we meet tomorrow's growing needs for food production, yet still respect the needs of the land? Some of the answers are being discovered just ahead. To help us maintain these carefully controlled ecosystems, and for your safety, please remain seated in your boat at all times. It's Christmas. I wish it was a little darker, but this will do. There's Christmas lights and ornaments all over the place. Welcome to our glimmering greenhouses where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture illuminate the wondrous gifts we receive from the land. Join us as we bring in the most bountiful time of the year. Oh, look at the sand man, our sand snowman. For some, it's difficult to imagine the holidays without winter and snow. When you think of holidays, you might not think of fish, but seafood is an essential part of many festive meals. In the parts of southern Italy, family and friends have been once a year to celebrate the proper joy of the seven coast seafood in Italy. The round of the past and shrimp are the world's greatest meal. Citrus, like the oranges grown here, are common in Florida. But in Northern Europe, where fresh fruit is rare in winter, they're much harder to find, making them an extra special stocking stuffer. I like the gifts all over the place here. More wreaths, looks like those are out of lemons. They say it's better to give than to receive. And in this greenhouse, we're celebrating the holidays by giving back to Hopefully the land. you guys can tell a little bit better. I lowered the exposure a little bit. This greenhouse alone grows a powerful 15 tons of produce each year. Many of the plants you see here help spice up the holiday. The bark of cinnamon trees, like the one growing beside you, is used to make cinnamon sticks by cultivating these festive plants. Oh, look at the stockings. Epcot scientists are able to celebrate the different scientists the lands from Epcot, Epcot. Their names on the stockings. On behalf of Walt Disney World, we hope you've enjoyed this unique journey through our These greenhouses represent just a fraction of the work being done worldwide to produce bountiful harvests for our growing population. It's always a nice treat getting to ride living with the land during the holiday season and getting to see the Christmas overlay. Right now, the current standby wait to ride Soren is a 55 minute wait. There's my man Goofy and Pluto. Hello! <laughs> You're my hero, Goofy. My hero. <laughs> well, I was going to hop in the Spaceship Earth line, but that line is still a little too long for me. But I got an idea. Let's try to park hop over to Hollywood Studios and try to have a ride on Rise of the Resistance, possibly. Just like that, hello from Disney's Hollywood Studios. I totally forgot about Sunset Greetings. We get to see that tonight. Heck yeah. Wow. Look at this place, decorated for Christmas. I love the retro Christmas decor. Check out the waterfront here. There's Gurney right over there. Christmas ornaments inside of the water. And of course, the beautiful Christmas tree. Well, it's also still pretty busy here at Hollywood Studios. Rock and roller coaster, a 70 minute wait. No lightning lane, Slinky Dog 120, no lightning lane. Star Tours 25, no lightning lane. 
and then Rise of the Resistance. Nothing left. Then Toy Story Mania, 65. Tower of Terror, 45. Well, we'll still go over to Rise of the Resistance and just have a look. What? A Ogus Cantina reservation just popped up for 740? Ugh, should I do it? It's very tempting. No surprise here. It's a mess over here at Rise of the Resistance. Look at this. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it just went down. Well, that sucks. Yes, I just confirmed with the cast member Rise of the Resistance is down once again today. I stopped inside Docs to see if they have the Dark Saber. They do not. But hello, Doc. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. Get those dark sabers in stock. It's almost Christmas. Man, I forgot how awesome Star Wars Galaxy's Edge looks at nighttime. Everybody has their lightsabers out. I clicked the 740 reservation for Ogas, but it disappeared. So no Ogas for tonight, which is probably a good thing because I already had a lot of fun at Space 220. But uh, where's Kylo? He's nowhere to be found. Dang. I stopped over here at Alien Swirling Saucers to see if they have their Christmas overlay, but it doesn't look like it. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is currently a 65 minute wait at a little after 7 p.m. Okay, let's go watch Sunset Greetings on the Tower of Terror. It just started. This runs nightly until park close. Oh no, it's snooping. <laughs> Something else very exciting that's coming back here to Disney's Hollywood Studios is Fantasmic early next year of 2022. We don't have a specific date just yet, but very exciting news. Also, I just totally realized I've been saying the name wrong. This is called Sunset Seasons Greetings. I got it. All right, my friends, that's gonna do it for today's video. I had another very fun day here at Walt Disney World. You know, the days I come to the parks without any kind of a game plan, I just go in, see what's available, and I make the best out of it. Those days always turn out to be the very best days, and today was one of those days. I really enjoyed my time at Space 220. I enjoyed the company, the food, the drinks, the atmosphere. I love that place, especially the lounge. Like that was very fun. I also really enjoyed my ride on living with the land with the Christmas overlay and then heading over here to Disney's Hollywood Studios to close out the night. I really enjoyed watching Sunset Seasons Greetings. It does really suck that Rise of the Resistance went down because I really wanted to ride that attraction, but you know, there's always something with that ride, so no surprise. I hope all of you have a happy Thanksgiving. I'm going to be taking a few days off just to go spend some time with my family and Bianca, but we we will be back very soon with more Christmas and more fun. If you guys are coming here to Walt Disney World, enjoy yourselves. Be nice to the cast members because this week is a tough week for cast members. So if you are a cast member or if you know any cast members at home, please tell them thank you and treat them with kindness. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember, it's nice to be nice in YouTube. I'll see you in the next video. Prince Charming, out. I am feeling lonely in a room and it's time to end the ride. Fading it too slowly Were those gonna lift me up this time? You were the only One who got me tripping up inside